disassemble and service the turbocharger every 4,800 hours. Prepare these replacement parts before servicing. Prepare the tools for disassembly in advance. Prepare the general tools shown in the list. Prepare these accessory tools for the turbocharger. Prepare these tools for making the necessary measurements. Prepare these special tools. Click the Order Form button in the menu to order and prepare special tools in advance. Now let's look at the disassembly procedures. Before starting disassembly, put on a helmet, safety glasses, earplugs, safety gloves, and shoes. Before removing the turbocharger, cool the engine for about four hours after stopping operation. First, measure the exhaust flexible joint. Measure the installation size H and the displacement distance at a right angle to the shaft X at the four positions shown. Check that the measured values are almost identical to those shown on the record sheet and enter your values on the sheet. Remove the turbocharger from the engine. The cover is best removed too to make it easier to remove the turbocharger. Remove the bolt at the exhaust inlet. The bolt at the exhaust outlet. And the installation foot bolt. In the case of the RH133 Remove the blower casing set bolt. The joint bolts of the turbocharger and the exhaust output pipe should not be loosened yet. Install the lifting fixture and remove the turbocharger. Lift with care. Now let's look at how to disassemble the turbocharger. The installation angle of the turbocharger casing depends on the engine assembly Mark the alignment position for the compressor and turbine casings before starting disassembly. Stand the turbocharger on its turbine side. Remove the silencer. Take care not to damage the steel mesh while removing the silencer. Next is removal of the compressor housing. Take care not to damage the compressor impeller while removing the housing. Place the turbocharger on its side and measure the turbine rotor clearance. To measure the thrust clearance, push the compressor impeller to the turbine side and set the dial to zero. Then push the impeller to the compressor side and read the dial. This value is the thrust clearance. To measure the radio clearance, set the dial to zero at the end of the compressor impeller. Then press the compressor side of the turbine rotor upwards and read the dial again. Next, Press the compressor side downwards and read the new value. The total of the upper and lower values is the radial clearance. Make this measurement about three times and take the average values. Check that the average is within the range allowed in the table. Next, measure the exhaust casing clearance. Measure the clearance at four positions and check that the measured values exceed the values listed in the table. 
If the clearance is smaller, the turbine wheel will come in contact with the casing. After measurement, enter the results on the record sheet. In the case of inspections every 2400 hours, an overhaul is needed if any of the four measured clearances fails to correspond to the listed clearance. Click Disassembly 2. If all values are within the allowable range, click Assembly 2. Install the turbine rotor fastening tool onto the gas outlet flange of the turbine housing. For more convenient reassembly of the compressor impeller, mark the alignment position on the threads and nut. Remove the shaft end nut. This has a left hand thread, so turn it clockwise for removal. Pull out the compressor impeller. If it is hard to remove, heat the impeller with a dryer or other device before removal. Do not knock the shaft end with a hammer or other tool. After making an alignment mark, remove the hexagonal bolts fastening the ceiling plate. Use the two bolts just removed as puller bolts to remove the ceiling plate and oil thrower together. Remove the anti-side thrust collar. Use the two hexagonal bolts which fasten the ceiling plate as puller bolts to remove the thrust bearing. Remove the distance piece. Remove the direct side thrust collar. Remove the O-ring. Next is removal of the turbine housing. First, remove the hexagonal bolts. Apply penetrant to the spigot joint of the turbine housing. A bolt interferes at the base of the installation foot. Turn the housing to remove it. These bolts are heat resistant. Separate them from the others. Place the turbocharger upside down to remove the turbine housing. Place the turbocharger on a proper mount so that the end of the rotor shaft does not strike the top of the table. Put a wire through the turbine rotor fastener and remove the turbine housing with a crane. If it is hard to remove, knock around the perimeter of the housing lightly with a plastic hammer. Take care not to damage the turbine wheel. Remove the turbine rotor. Take care not to damage the turbine shaft. In the case of the RH-133, remove the metal sealing gasket. Remove the heat insulator. If it is hard to remove, knock it lightly with a plastic hammer. Now remove the turbine side seal ring from the turbine rotor with the seal ring pliers. Be sure to replace the seal ring upon reassembly. Remove the oil thrower from the compressor impeller side sealing plate that was removed just a moment ago. Remove the compressor side seal ring from the oil thrower with the seal ring pliers. Next is disassembly of the bearing. First, the turbine side. Remove the snap ring with the snap ring pliers. Remove the floating bearing. Remove the compressor side snap ring and the floating bearing. This completes disassembly of the turbocharger. We will next explain how to clean the turbocharger. Hard carbon accumulates on the turbine housing shroud and turbine wheel. Imperfect cleaning upsets the balance of the rotor shaft, so be sure to remove all of the carbon. Use the powerful Curry Pearl YF2 cleaning agent for the turbocharger. Curry Pearl consists of two agents, A and B. 
read the instructions printed on the package before using the curry pearl. Put water into the containers and prepare 20% solutions of agents A and B. Stir them well. Apply grease to the bearing and seal ring in advance to prevent rusting. Heat the cleaning solution to 60 to 70 degrees Celsius and submerge the exhaust casing, rotor shaft and heat insulator in it. Submerge the parts for more than four hours. After removing the parts from the cleaning solution, wash them with water and rub them lightly with a nylon brush or similar tool to remove any residue. Wash the compressor impeller compressor casing, and bearing housing with cleaning oil. Contamination of the seal ring in particular can cause oil leakage or bearing damage. Be very careful not to damage this part when cleaning. After cleaning, check the cleaned items carefully. Measure the width of the seal ring groove on the turbine rotor shaft with the slide calipers. The illustration on the left shows a rotor shaft that can still be used. The worn part shown on the right has reduced sealing performance. In such a case, we recommend replacement of the rotor shaft. Enter the measured results on the record sheet. Check by hand that the shaft end nut can be screwed lightly onto the bottom threads. Check that some coating remains in the gas passage. Here we will explain the reassembly procedures. First, install the bearing. The reassembly procedures depend on the type of bearing, so check the bearing type. First, let's look at reassembly of a semi-floating bearing. This is the compressor side. Fully apply lube oil to the new floating bearing before placing it in the bearing housing. Reassemble so that the notch on the bearing end face is deeply inserted so that the pin is securely positioned in the notch in the bearing housing. Install the snap ring onto the bearing housing with the snap ring pliers. Install the snap ring with the rounded face directed towards the bearing side. Point the end gap of the snap ring to the right, as seen from the compressor side. Install the bearing on the turbine side in the same way. Install the snap ring with its end gap pointing to the left, as seen from the turbine side. After installing the snap ring, check that the semi-floating bearing has the appropriate clearance in both the shaft and rotational directions. Next, let's look at reassembly of a full floating bearing. The full floating bearing has a free orientation. It can be reassembled pointing in either direction. Place the rounded side of the snap ring facing the bearing side and point the end gap downwards on both the turbine and compressor sides. Next, install the seal ring. Install the compressor side seal ring onto the oil thrower with the seal ring pliers. The end gap of the seal ring is gas tight. Install the turbine side seal ring onto the turbine rotor with the seal ring pliers. The end gap of this seal ring is straight. Straight seal rings are used interchangeably for both sides on all models except the RH133. Prepare the bearing housing for the next assembly step. Place the turbocharger on its compressor side on an appropriate block so that the rotor shaft end does not come in contact with the top of the table. 
Install the heat insulator onto the bearing housing. Now let's look at installation of the turbine rotor shaft. Apply lube oil to the journal of the turbine rotor shaft before reassembly. Face the end gap of the turbine side seal ring upwards and assemble it from the vertical direction. In the case of the RH133, install the metal sealing gasket between the heat insulator and turbine housing. Now install the turbine housing. Take care not to damage the turbine wheel. Install the turbine side stop plate and heat resistant hexagonal bolts that were kept apart during disassembly. Apply seizure prevention agent to the bolts. Turn the turbocharger upside down. Install the turbine housing on the bearing housing, referring to the marks made during disassembly. Apply lube oil to the direct side thrust collar, then insert it onto the turbine rotor. Apply lube oil to the thrust bearing, then install it so it is aligned with the parallel pins. Check that the installation mark for the thrust bearing is at the top. Take care that it is not skewed after installation or it might block the oil gallery. Apply lube oil to the distance piece and insert it. Apply lube oil to the anti-side thrust collar and insert it. Apply grease to the O-ring and install it onto the bearing housing groove. Fit it on neatly, taking care not to twist it. Insert the oil thrower into the compressor side sealing plate. Take care to point the end gap of the compressor side seal ring upwards. Match the sealing plate with the oil thrower to the alignment mark and install it in the bearing housing. Check the orientation of the punched arrow mark. Install the spring washer and hexagonal bolts. Apply grease to the rotor shaft. Match the impeller with the alignment mark and insert the impeller into the turbine rotor. Install the shaft end nut with a torque wrench. The nut has a left hand thread, so turn it counterclockwise. The tightening torque is 32.4 newton meters. Check that the installation position basically corresponds to the line marked during disassembly. If there is a large difference, you will have to reassemble it again. If the difference is small, tighten the nut with a torque wrench using the tightening torque specified in the table. Now measure the thrust clearance and the radial clearance of the turbine rotor. Measure in the same way as in disassembly. Check that the measurements are within the allowable range and enter the results on the record sheet. If the results deviate from the allowable range, reassemble again, keeping in mind the clearance values during disassembly. Measure the exhaust casing clearance. Check that the measurements are normal and enter the results on the record sheet. Compare the measurements with those made before disassembly to check that turbocharger cleaning was effective. Next is installation of the compressor housing. First, insert the O-ring between the bearing housing and compressor housing. Apply grease to the O-ring before inserting it. When installing the compressor housing, take care not to damage the compressor impeller. Align using the marks made before disassembly. Install the washers and the hexagonal bolts. 
Install the silencer. Turn the turbine wheel by hand to check that it turns lightly without any hitches or contact noise. That completes reassembly of the turbocharger. Next is installation of the turbocharger onto the engine. Set two new O-rings and one V-ring in the correct positions. The O-ring may be damaged when installing the turbocharger. Be sure to lower the turbocharger carefully. To make turbocharger installation easier, first set the installation foot bolt. Don't forget to install the set bolt. Apply Molly coat to the installation bolts to prevent seizure and insert the packing. Then tighten the bolts. Check the flexible joint dimensions. Compare the measurements with those made before this inspection and check that the values are almost identical. Enter the results on the record sheet. Test operate the engine and check that there is no air leakage, oil leakage, or abnormal sound. If everything is normal, install the cover. This completes disassembly servicing of the turbocharger.